Hello. Uh oh. Instagram messed up. Come back, Instagram. Come back. Here we go. There we go. No. What in the world? I don't know why it is deciding that every time I add to the story, it wants to go to the gallery. But we will fix this. <gasps> no. Let's see. Oh, I think he said the internet sometimes doesn't like to stay connected. What is the deal? We will get this working. This is what happens when you don't do a live stream for a while. <laughs> Let's see. <sighs> we will get this to work. Or we just won't be on Instagram. Hello, hello on Facebook. And I think we're a little crooked. I will fix this too. There we go while we're at it. Oh, it's not wanting to work. That's okay. We will just, oh, here we go. I think it worked. Now we have to go back to Instagram. It's gonna work. No. All right, well, Instagram isn't working, but hopefully the rest of them are, which I think they are. I did a new thing on Facebook, so I'm just gonna see if it shared it to the recipe page because we're connected together. Let me see if it posted on here. If you're on the recipe page, can you see this? Or are you from my Facebook page? Let me refresh and see if it worked. Again, hello, hello, Linda, the baking queen. Patty, hello. Hi, pretty young lady. Oh, Patty, well, hi, Aunt Patty. <laughs> I'm not going to like go on the opposite of that. Let's see. Oh, why is this not working? All right, so we will just share it the old-fashioned way. We're just some technical difficulties. When you don't do a live stream for a while, you kind of forget how to do this. And I remember now, and of course, now my computer's frozen. Here we go. Cindy, hello. Deanna, hello. Share to a group. We got to get our recipe group in here. Okay, post it. Now we are officially all together. So I decided that today we are going to dig into the world of meal prepping because I meal prep for Tim once a week and I do it for his whole weeks of meals. Unless like if we're gonna go out of town or something then I'll make him two weeks of meals, something like that. Whatever needs to be made. Because he is also doing this. Let me just move this away. He is also on this no sugar, no flour, weight loss diet adventure with us. So I decided I was going to make all of his meals for him because he lives in a group home and he has some disabilities, those types of things. And he likes to eat food, don't we all? So I decided I'm going to make him his meals so he can lose some weight. And he is just the cutest guys. You can find all the info about him and like updates and stuff if you go to my website or my Facebook page. You can find all that stuff so you can kind of get caught up on Tim. But now that I've been meal prepping for him, I have found some pros and cons and some things I like and don't like with meal prep. So I'm going to show you, we're going to dig into the recipe first. We're going to make a meal prep meal that I've made for him. So it's batch cooking. So instead of just making one serving at a time, we're going to multiply the servings. So this one, this recipe is multiplied times three. So this is gonna make three full breakfasts. I had one today because I made myself the same thing so then I could show you guys. So uh, this multiplies it times three and it is delicious and it's so easy. The next three days of breakfast, done. So we're going to make blueberry nut tops and they are fabulous. So I have my oven preheating at 350. Depending on your oven, you might need to do 375, depending on how much you like it done. But 350 usually is perfect. Then you're going to take a can of chickpeas and you're going to drain and blend them. I already did that. I like to do, now since I use chickpeas so much, I like to do five cans at a time. So I drain them and I blend them. And I thought, oh, I'm going to try the food processor. Maybe that'll be easier when I have more chickpeas. No, it was not as easy. I like my little hand blender. I'll show you it. Hand blender or immersion blender, this goes together and then you just blend it up. It works great. So you're gonna blend some chickpeas. So I already have pre-blended chickpeas. It should make like this paste looking thing. So we're gonna need that. 
You're gonna need, of course, some bananas, some peanut butter. This is egg-free and dairy-free, so if you are vegan or whole food plant-based, this works for you. So let's dig in. You're going to need a big bowl. Now, when I use this big bowl, I have to turn my scale on first before I put the bowl on there, otherwise it goes E, and then it doesn't work. So I gotta put it on, then I have to zero the scale. So if your scale does that, that is fine. I just wanna double check and make sure we got the recipe page on here too. Because if you're watching from the recipe page, let me know. Because I wanna make sure that we're all in here together. Oh no, how do I find the recipe page? Let's see. I wanna make sure that we're in this together. I don't want y'all to miss out on this cooking because a lot of you had asked about it. Groups. Make sure that it's on there. Yes, it is. Okay, good, good, good. Anyways, back to what we were doing. So we are going to do uh, 14 ounces of banana because, again, this recipe is for three full breakfasts, and this has all of our fruit in it. And I'm going to split it up between frozen blueberries and bananas. Uh, Lisa, I'm on the weight loss recipe page. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you for letting me know. I did double check, and we have the recipe page connected with us, and we're on TikTok. Instagram is not working, don't know why. So we're gonna do 14 ounces of bananas. They could be frozen, they could be fresh, whichever ones you have. I have some fresh ones. These are the last of the ripe ones. I have some green bananas. I made John run to the store. You know you eat healthy when you have to do an emergency banana run. It used to be emergency like junk food runs, but now we're like, John, we're out of bananas. You can never be out of bananas. So we're gonna do 14 ounces or as many ounces as I have of the ripe ones total of bananas. All right, so this came out to 10 ounces, which is three bananas. So I need just a little bit more. We're gonna dig into the new non-ripe bananas, but that's okay, because it's just a little bit, not too much. So it will be sweet enough. If you use all green bananas, it's not as sweet, and we want this nice and sweet. So we just need four more ounces. So maybe this whole banana. Eh. These are harder to peel when they're green. Ah, perfect. 14 ounces was about four bananas. Let me grab a napkin. You can't cook when you have slimy banana fingers. It just doesn't work. So then I like to mash this before I add everything else. So I'm gonna take it off my scale and when I do my batch cooking, I like to mash it with this big thing. If I use a fork, it's just way too much work, way too much um, muscle to get it in there. And this works perfectly for doing big batches. This does not work as well. Gravity tested, Miss Linda. It's still working. This does not work as well. This does not work as well if you're doing just one batch at a time because it does pretty big chunks. But when you have a lot of banana in there, it works perfect. So you wanna get this pretty mashed up in there. I mean, if you have some chunks, that's okay, cause it's still gonna be delish. You can have chunks of fruit. So what I like to do for Timmy is, when I started doing it and it was just way too much, was I was trying to do every day something different for him. And that just became too much mental processing and I almost quit. So then I found a happy medium because I don't want him to have the same exact meals every single day. So what I do is I'll make three days of one thing, then I'll make four days of another thing. And then they alternate between those. So he's having banana nut tops and then he's having something else. Then the next day he's having banana nut tops, then the next day he's having something else. And I do that with lunch and dinner that's just what I like to do for him. So as I'm putting these recipes together, they'll usually be multiplied by three or four. And four sometimes is easier to wrap your brain around with the proportions and all that stuff, but three is workable. Hello, Betty, thank you for joining. All right, so we have our 14 ounces banana. Now we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. So we're gonna do three ounces canned chickpeas that are blended already. You could blend these at the beginning, then add your banana and mash it. But I have this big old bowl that I'll be using throughout the week. So I'm gonna do three ounces of blended chickpeas. 
Then we're going to do two and a half ounces of peanut butter. Because again, these are going to be peanut buttery. They're going to be fudgy. They're going to be oh so delicious. Uh, my favorite peanut butter, it's pretty simple. It's just the Walmart organic peanut butter brand. Uh, Aldi's also has an organic peanut butter brand that's great. Uh, your peanut butter should not have any oils. It should just be peanuts and maybe salt. And try to get organic because with peanuts, uh, they can store them and they can get moldy if they're not organic. But if you don't get organic, that is fine. Just do the best you can. Just make sure there's no sugar in it. Usually Jif has sugar. Don't use that. But this is just dry roasted peanuts and salt. How easy is that? So we did two and a half ounces of this. Now we're going to do two and a half ounces of walnuts, or you can use any of your favorite nuts. When I made this for myself, I use peanuts, almonds, pecans, and walnuts. So depending on your nut preference, or if you don't like nuts, you can do more chickpeas. If you don't like peanut butter, you could do more nuts. You could do some flaxseed. You could do some seeds, those types of things. Linda! Gravity still works. Linda, Natalie, I stepped out for a minute. What are you baking? Not a problem. We are making blueberry nut tops. And I had them for breakfast today and they were so good. So we're gonna do two and a half ounces of walnuts. And you can crush them or just put them in whole. My uncle Tim has had some crowns in his teeth so I like to do a little bit softer nuts for him. So I'm not going to do almonds in his. I'm just going to do just walnuts. And he doesn't care. He just likes all the food that I make. It's so cute. And there's the phone. One Sunday after church, he caught me and he took my hand. He's so sweet. He holds my hand. He's like, Natalie. I'm like, what, Uncle Tim? And he said, oh, thank you for the delicious food. I'm like, oh, that was so sweet. He is so Hi, sweet. It was so cute of him. Phone is still going off. Linda, mm, those must be new. It is. This is a brand new recipe that I am putting together a meal prep or a batch cooking cookbook. Because of all the meals I'm making for Tim, I'm putting it together. I have like 53 recipes and I want to hit at least 60. I like to put at least 60 recipes in one cookbook for all of you. So it's getting there pretty soon. I'm, get, I'm putting more recipes together. So all these batch cooking recipes will be in one cookbook. And I'm getting closer with volume 13 being finished. I just finished, I'm on the second round of editing. I just put in that inspirational part. I always like to put that in there. So that is coming really soon. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Life has been busy, but I'm getting there because I, I want to get it out for you. Um, did I miss? Christy, allergic to tree nuts, so peanuts are great. Alternative, yes. You can use any of your favorite nuts or seeds. You could do chia seeds in this too. I'm glad you tried and approved. Yes, you can't go wrong with nuts. Any nuts will do. Uh, Marianne, I miss your Uncle Tim. Oh, that is so sweet. He is the sweetest guy. He sings songs. I used to pick him up on the bus and he would sing songs. Um, he would sing Uncle Natalie. It was really cute. Then he wrote a song, Natalie. It was a, he wrote it, so it's Natalie, kiss my knee, got some work to do. And then he would laugh and laugh and laugh. I don't, it was kind of like Scooby-Doo. I don't know why, but he thought it was so funny. It was the cutest thing. Um, let's see. Linda, awesome. Batch cooking is my thing. It is, girl. You are a batch cooking extraordinaire. Patty, great idea. Thank you. Doreen, first time watching you. Love your recipes. Ah, oh, Doreen. Well, thank you for joining. It is so fun having all friends together. It's like a cooking party in my kitchen. Pat just checked in. What are you cooking? We are batch cooking. We are making a three day breakfast, three meals, uh, and they are blueberry nut tops. All right, so we have our nuts. We have all of our protein in this right now, and we have almost all of our fruit. We're missing four ounces of fruit, but we will get there. So now, we're going to do three ounces of uncooked oats. And <laughs> I buy him just these Quaker oats. And uh, when I was meal prepping for him yesterday, I did all of his meals except for this. And I'm like, oh no, I'm not gonna have enough oats. I had exactly three ounces left. I measured it so I could just pour that whole thing in. Three ounces. That was really satisfying. So remind me, I gotta buy him some more oats. As we 
keep going. Um, there's something super satisfying about having like exact amounts and then you like finish a whole container. Oh, so satisfying. So now we're going to do a half teaspoon of baking soda. So what this does is it helps this get nice and toasty brown. It helps it toast. If you want a little lift, but there's no eggs in this, you could do a little bit of baking powder. But in this recipe, we're not going to do the baking powder because we want these dense and fudgy and a little bit toasted and always a pinch of sea salt. I'm doing probably about a fourth teaspoon or more, depending on how salty you like it. Then we're going to measure some vanilla extract with our heart or about a teaspoon, whichever works for you. You could use maple extract. You could use a different extract, whatever ones you like. I know Miss Linda, she is the extract queen. She likes to put in all her potions and things and make it taste good. She likes her butter and rum extract. Let's see. Then we're going to do some sea salt. No, not sea salt, cinnamon, totally different thing. We're going to do a teaspoon of cinnamon. You could do more if you like it cinnamony. I think mine, I did two teaspoons because I really like cinnamon. Let's see, do we have everything in here? We do. So now before we mix this, you could mix this. So what I did was when I made mine, I forgot to put the blueberries in, put it in the oven. I went out to the freezer and I'm like, wait, I forgot to put the blueberries in. So I just pushed my blueberries on top, but the original recipe, we're going to mix them in. So either way, they're going to be delicious. So we're going to put in four ounces of frozen blueberries. And then that will be our complete fruit for the three days. So we want four ounces. We're getting there. I just don't want a big old hump to come out. And then it's like five ounces. I've done that way too many times. Three, four. Perfect. Hit it right on the nose. Then we're going to mix this up because we have all our ingredients in there. So we're done with our scale. So we're gonna mix this so it makes one nice batter. I made mine in a muffin pan, but you could make these as cookies. You could make this as one big bar and then cut it up. I've done that before. You could just make this as one big blob on a cake pan. I think we're gonna make these ones as cookies for my Uncle Tim, because sometimes it's easier than washing a muffin pan if I'm meal prepping for him for a whole week I'll be like oh I'm gonna make this as bars or as cookies instead because it goes a little bit faster and he doesn't mind at all he just likes all the food he's so excited he is so cute he tells me all the time and when my dad goes and picks him up with John he's like oh he'll tell them all the meals he had one time he's like oh, I had cheeseburger pizza soup I like to put fancy names on his food yeah so it was really cute all right, so this is what your batter should look like. Or again, you could just press your blueberries on top. You could try this with different fruits. Strawberries might be a little bit too watery, but berries, other berries like cherries, you could even do mangoes, that would be delicious. Um, blueberries, raspberries, any of your favorite fruits, you could do all banana in this if you wanted and make it like a latte one, put some instant coffee in it. The possibilities are endless. All right, make sure that we did everything. We did it. So now I lined my pan. It's just a little pan. I lined it with some parchment paper. You could oil your pan. I sometimes like to do parchment paper. It seems a little bit easier to me sometimes. So now we're just going to dollop all of our stuff on here, make little dollops. And you kind of want to make them even, even sized dollops because we're going to divide this into three separate servings. And I'll show you how I did that also. There's two different ways you can do it. So just keep scooping them on. And again, these were like peanut buttery, nutty with the fruity. They were just really good. I had them for breakfast with a cup of coffee. It was so good. No wonder Timmy likes these meals so much. I was telling somebody, I'm like, I have never eaten such good food since I've cut out sugar and flour. Because before I would eat a sad bowl of cereal and then I, that just wouldn't satisfy or keep you full for long. So then I just want more. And then, or I would have, I remember Kelly told me she, she lived in an apartment for a while and then she moved back. But 
but she said one of her breakfasts she used to have, it was so bad, it was Oreo Pop-Tarts and chocolate milk. That was her breakfast. And she would be hungry later because, of course, that's going to give you a sugar high, no real sustenance, and then you're just going to be hungry 10 minutes later, and it doesn't satisfy, and then it awakens the craving monster, and just, but that's how, I mean, if we weren't, we weren't taught as kids. We weren't taught in society how to eat healthy and all this stuff. We were like box meals, easy stuff, just grab and go. But these, really cooking healthy is not hard at all. You can make this grab and go. Look at how fast. We just made three meals, three days of meals of breakfasts in like what, 20 minutes? And we were chatting in between. I make all Timmy's meals for the whole week. It'll maybe take me about depending on the meals and how complicated or intricate, it'll maybe take me about two, three hours for a whole week of food for one person. How easy is that? So I'm gonna pop these in the oven and I'm gonna set it for 30 minutes. Depending on your oven, you might wanna do 35, 40 minutes, depending on your oven, just check them. And when you're making bigger batches of things, if it's thicker, wider, that type of thing, sometimes it'll take a little bit longer to cook, but you can always do the toothpick method or I like to do the poke method. If it's firm, it's good. Uh, firm in the center, make sure the center is firm. Uh, Christy, Sunday mornings at church are usually mostly sugar too. Yes, isn't that so sad? What we've done at our church, cause we have uh, like half an hour before church where people come and we have like coffee and, and juice for the kids. And then we have all these sugary like breakfast foods, right? But what I've done, and my mom, she's the pastor, she asked me, would you like to do this? And I'm like, yes, I will do this, is I make sugar and flour free ones. So for, there's a lot of people in our church who might just kind of be on the edge like my dad and brother are, where they're not strictly no sugar, no flour, but they're trying to eat healthier. And there's a lot of us ladies, and Timmy also now, that don't eat sugar and flour. So I'll even make them grain free. So I'll make... I'll do like chickpeas instead of oats or whatever because it's not technically a meal. So if you have, and I make them very small. So like if, if uh, one of us wants to have one or something like that. And that's what I do to kind of incorporate at church. I know Linda Steele, she likes to make bake things for her work and she brings them to the ladies there and she said they absolutely love them. So maybe try next time your church has a get together or family or party or all that kind of stuff. Make something sugar and flour free. Bake something. You might be surprised how much they really like it. So, let me get a sip of water. Cheers to healthy cooking. And now I'm gonna show you, it's kind of like when you watch the cooking shows. I feel like I need to come down here. Oh, look, it's done. These are the ones I made for myself. I got this really cute pan. Okay, I gotta show you the pan I got. I found it at a thrift store. Ooh. And it makes it into all these cute little flowers. Isn't that so cute? So I thought, I gotta try it out. And it made, it was the perfect amount. They were heaping on top just a little bit. And that was before I forgot to put the blueberries in. So I just pressed the blueberries on top, but it worked out. So this is what it turns out to be. So you get to eat all of this for breakfast and lose weight. That is a win-win. I mean, Kelly calls it bakery breakfast. It is, it's literally like eating at a bakery for breakfast and you get to lose weight. I never ate this good before. Linda, oh, Christy, super cute, thank you. Uh, Sarah, what is the chickpea and peanut butter amounts? Uh, the chickpeas were three ounces and the peanut butter was two and a half ounces and then the nuts were two and a half ounces also. And that was your full protein, full protein, cause you don't get fat at breakfast. So that was kind of fun. Uh, in the batch cooking, I don't put like, this is uh, half of your protein because it gets way too confusing when trying to batch cook and write that down. But I do all the math in my head and I have it where I would tell you if you need to side each meal with something, but I'm not gonna tell you like what amount of this is part of your thing. That's just in the batch cooking cookbook. But all my other cookbooks, I put the amounts. Uh, Linda, Natalie, they really do love them. A week ago, I brought your peanut butter and jelly breakfast cookies and they gobbled them up. Ah! so fun and isn't it fun to like shock people with how much delicious food we get to eat and then you tell them or they'll have like one and you'll tell them yeah for breakfast I get like six of those or I get eight of those depending on how many you get or one two three four five six seven I get seven 
Muffins for breakfast? What? What? Who does that? And you get to lose weight. I mean, win-win. That is just so fun. Uh, Sarah, thank you. I'm going to try this. Yes, they're so good. So this is what the top with the blueberries looks like. And then this is what the bottom looks like. It's the cutest little flower. I got to show you the rose one. That one's my favorite. Pop it out. So I did this one upside down so you could see the pretty rose in it. Isn't that gorgeous? And they popped right out of the muffin pan. I oiled it. I didn't line it because I wanted the cute little flower designs to come out. And they popped right out. It was great. So then how I divided it up is either if you have equal amounts, which this isn't. So this is four, four by five. So there's going to be unequal amounts of muffins. So what I did is I have three scales because there's three of us girls in the house. So I took all of our scales, all three, because this is for three days. And I put my containers on and then I divided it on there by weight. And then the last muffin I split up so it was even. That's how I split that up. Or if you have them even amount of number of things. So on the baking sheet, that will be even because it was three, three rows of four deep. So he'll get four cookies for breakfast per meal. So you could divide it that way or you can weigh it and make sure that everything is super equal depending on the peace of mind that you have doing either way. So you can do it that way where you just divide it up or you can weigh it out. Either way works. Uh, oops. Um, Christy, ugh, watching you in the school parking lot and my battery is dying. Oh no! When is replay available? Great question, Christy. Once the uh, live stream is finished, the replay will be available to watch again and again and again. So once it's finished, you'll be able to watch it again. Uh, Linda, yes ma'am, right? I brought two batches of cookies and everyone got two and I had my own batch of six. <laughs> eating two cookies and they're probably like, oh, I probably shouldn't eat this as you're eating your six cookies and losing weight at the same time. You're maintaining. Isn't that the best? Oh, it is so fun. I, I went to a buffet with some friends and I got the salad bar. So, you know, 14 ounces of vegetables at a salad bar, you get a lot of food. So they're like, how do you eat that much food? And I'm like, I haven't eaten since lunch. So I'm really hungry. It's been like six hours. So it's always kind of fun to kind of shock people with how much food we actually get to eat. Uh, keep going here. Uh, Linda. Yes, answer that too. Perfect. All right, so then I want to show you some containers that I use for meal prepping. So for Timmy, I just went to Walmart. I went in their Tupperware section and I found these meal prep containers. Now, I don't have any more left because I used them all up. So I bought two boxes and they have these that are just the single or they have one that's divided and the small section fits six ounces of fruit or vegetables perfectly. And then the big section fits whatever you're having for lunch perfectly. This, this fits a full dinner. Perfect. And it fits a full breakfast. So like if you have six cookies for breakfast, fits right in here. The only thing about the Walmart ones is they're very cheap, but they are microwavable, not the top. So like it's cracked a little, it still works. And then the covers crack a little bit. So then what I do is I write on the top because at his home, so they know what's for breakfast, what's for lunch. So then I write breakfast and then I just tape it on the top and then they, and I tell them if they need to heat it or thaw it or that type of thing. So then you know what it is. And all of these recipes I freeze because I'll make it sometimes Monday, I'll make it Thursday and then we don't bring it to his home till Sunday. So I'll freeze all of it. So these are very freezable. They thaw perfect. You could even have them a little bit frozen and then they're kind of like fudgy ice cream or like fudgier, cold. They're really delicious frozen too or just slightly thawed. So these are the meal prep containers I got from my Uncle Tim. Then I was doing some organizing in my kitchen because I'm in here a lot and I was so done with our Tupperware. So I bought some off of Amazon and I just want to show you because I'm really, really, really liking these. So they, I bought two different sets and they came in two different types of sizes and I've been really liking them. So this size is what I had my muffins in. This is the one I had. I did some spaghetti sauce, so that's why it's a little bit stained. But these are microwave safe, they're freezer safe. I wanted all of that. And then they are locking lids. So the lids lock and they stack nice. So I got these right off of Amazon. So this is the biggest size and this fits 
Like I'm, I've made dinner soups and dinner casseroles and this fits a whole dinner, one dinner in here perfectly, like just fits. Then it comes in one little bit smaller size. This fits like lunch vegetables perfectly, like six ounces of fruit or like a parfait, that type of thing. Then it comes in little square containers and then one little smaller size. Then I got it in a round one. So this came like as a pack. So there were two separate packs. I don't remember what came with what, but I'm glad that I got the two separate packs. Then I got these round ones and then they came with these tiny ones. I thought, I'm never going to use this. Perfect for sauces. So like if you were going to bring with like some sugar-free barbecue sauce or some dipping sauce, that type of thing, sugar-free ketchup, this fits it perfectly. And then I would close it and put it right in with my vegetables, close it up and then perfect for travel. So I just wanted to let you in on these. I have these linked on my website if you want to find these exact ones. So if you go on my website, there'll be like a bar that says find my favorite baking gadgets, that type of thing and more. Click on that and then there'll be a list and I have a list of there of Tupperware. And look, they just stack perfectly except for the round one. And I just thought I would show you those. So now while that's still cooking, we're done with our recipe. Excuse me. Oh boy. I'm missing comments. Alisa, they look so good. So far, I have loved every recipe of yours that I've tried. <gasps> Lisa, I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you. Which recipe book do you suggest? So many volumes, I don't know what to choose. That is a great question. I get that a lot. You could really start with any volume, one through 12, cooking with joy, simply delicious, whole food, plant-based, any of them. You could start anywhere, but I usually recommend starting with either volume one, simply delicious, the 14 day meal plan, depending on where you are in your sugar-free, flour-free, bleed journey. Uh, otherwise, I recommend cooking with joy one. That contains volumes one through five in one book. So you got a really good jump start, and those each have great starting and foundational recipes to get you going. But you can find a recipe index, a food gallery, recipes, and more on my website, and then you can find what volume would taste best for you. Because everybody has different tastes. I have different tastes, my mom has different tastes, my sister, so find what one are you like, oh, that recipe I like, oh, I like those flavors, because each book is just a little bit different. So that's the scoop on that. Uh, Linda, um, oh, that was her answering that. Let's see, we gotta get all the comments in here. It likes to skip. Um, Sarah, I couldn't decide either. So I bought the co compiled recipes in Cooking with Joy volume one and two. That is also a great choice. Then you have volumes one through 10 in two big books. Um, totally worth it, great books. Oh, Sarah, you are so sweet. Thank you so much and thank you for your orders. Uh, Christy, the holiday book is amazing. Yes, all the holiday recipes put in one book. Uh, Gail, what is the oven temperature? I have the oven at 350. My little toaster oven cooks a little bit um, cooler, so I have that always at like 400, sometimes 375, but that's my little toaster oven. If you're using a regular oven, I would do 350 to 375. So now I want to show you another way to meal prep or batch cook or multiply a recipe, because let's say since my batch cooking cookbook isn't out yet and you don't know, you want to make this recipe, but you want to make it for more than one meal. So I grab my cookbook. I literally cook out of this all the time. See all these? These are from my mom and sister because they're cooking out of it too. Uh, Christy, love, or Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Love my two books. Oh, Cindy, I'm so glad to hear that. Sarah, will you be coming out with a Cooking with Joy 3 someday? Absolutely. Once I get to volume 15, then I'll do another Cooking with Joy because then I'll have five volumes to put in there. I'm on 13 right now and I'm almost finished with volume 13. So new recipes coming soon. And some of them, oh, I forgot about those recipes. They're so good. So that is coming soon. I'm in the second processing of editing it myself. And then I'll put it through my editors and then on to publishing, which Barnes & Noble, which I published through, has been having some delays and technical difficulties lately. I've been waiting for about a month for a shipment of books to come. Half of it came so far. So if you're waiting for books, that is why. They are having very slow printing and processing right now. But patience is a virtue, right? <laughs> Teaching us patience. Who prayed for patience? 
Okay, so I'm going to show you how to multiply recipes. So let's take my Cooking with Joy cookbook too. And let's just, a dinner recipe. We're going to make a, let's do a like casserole. Oh, I have a batch cooking in here. Let's do the chicken zucchini lasagna. So it's page 299 of Cooking with Joy 2. So let's say I want to make this recipe, I'm losing my sticky notes. I want to make this recipe, but I want to multiply it times two. How would I do that to get the measurements correct? So Sarah, I have, I had both of my Cooking with Joy books spiral bound. Oh, that is genius. I wish, I wish Barnes and Noble had a spiral binding option, but they don't have that. I started out with hardcover, but their binding to the hardcover broke right away. So I'm like, mm -mm, we got to do all soft cover because I don't want my, my friends and all my people who are buying these books, I don't want their books to break. So we're doing soft cover now, but I wish they did spiral bound. That would be so awesome. So let's say I want to make this chicken lasagna times two. So there's two different ways you can do this. So what I like to do, I'm going to show you. I usually use a casserole dish about this big. Or let's say I want to make it times three because there's three of us girls. You could do it by three or two. So what I would do is I would do the full recipe, make one layer. Then I would do the full recipe, make the second layer. Full recipe, make the third layer. Depending on how many times I want to multiply this recipe, it usually will fit in this big one. This is a four quart baking dish and it's microwave safe, oven safe. It's fabulous and then I would cover it and bake it. You might have to bake it a little bit longer, but that's one way to multiply a recipe is you make it in layers. The second way to multiply a recipe is I would put all of the vegetables in the bottom. So let's say, so I'm going to weigh these all. So I have 15 ounces because it does shrink. Now zucchini shrinks even more. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll do 16 ounces because then that's one pound of the total of vegetables because it will shrink when it's cooking. It'll release a lot of water. So I'll put this whole thing on my scale and it fits on there. And then I would put one pound, zero the scale, or depending on your scale, just do three pounds of vegetables all in there. Or if you want to do the 15 ounces, 15 ounces, zero the scale, do 15 ounces, zero to scale. So then it's multiplied times three or two, depending on how many you want to make this for. Then what I would do is, for this chicken zucchini lasagna is then I would do, so it's two ounces chicken. So I would do two, four, six, six ounces total of chicken. Then it's one ounce ricotta cheese. So I would do three ounces ricotta cheese and I would put that all in a bowl, mix that all up. And then I would follow the recipe. Now the only thing you would not multiply perfectly times three would be the spices. I've done that and it's too spicy. I would multiply it times, so let's say you're making this for three, I would multiply it times two. So it says three fourths teaspoon of each of onion powder, I would do three fourths teaspoon twice. That's it, because you don't want it too spicy. I mean, hey, if you want a little more, more salt, put a little bit more salt. You can measure the spices with your heart. You could leave it just the single spices, but that would be the only thing I would not multiply times three. And then like the spaghetti sauce or the Parmesan is half ounce. So you would do one half ounce, one half ounce, that's one ounce. And then you'd get one more half ounce. So that's one and a half ounces. I've literally had to do it with my fingers processing through a recipe or I'll write it down. I'll do like a tally mark thing. So then I know, oh, okay, this is the fall of whatever this needs to be. So that's how I would take a recipe and multiply it. You can do the same thing with breakfast, with lunch, with the dinner. If you're going to like make um, a big saute bowl, just throw in a bunch of vegetables in a wok or in a huge um, stovetop bowl or what is it called? In a pot. There's another phone going off. You never know what's going to happen live. So what I'll do for Tim is like for lunches and dinners, especially dinners, is I will get a big thing of ground turkey or ground beef and I'll fry that up. So then I have my ground beef separate. Then I'll take a big old pot. I have this big giant pot. I'll show you it. It's beautiful. It's big. I use it all the time. This big old pot. This is what I use for his dinner vegetables. So then I'll just buy all frozen vegetables. So I'll buy, it's like this pepper and onion blend. 
And then they have like these stir fry vegetables just at Walmart. Frozen vegetables, I'll put it all in this pot and then I'll just stir fry it, cook it up, steam it, so then it's nice and soft and they're cooked through. Then I'll take his meal prep containers and I'll put 14 ounces in each one for dinner. Then I'll top it with, depending on how much of the meat I want in each one, depending on the other proteins. So then I'll take this and I'll put four ounces of meat on top. I do the woman's uh, portions for him because I've modified his food a little bit because he needs it like that. Uh, tons of details. Anyways, so uh, I'll do four ounces of meat on top of each one. Then I'll do like an ounce of cheese for his fat, or I'll do two ounces of olives or two ounces whole milk ricotta cheese for his fat. And then I'll, maybe I'll do some spices depending on if I'm doing it like taco or I'm doing it more um, like spaghetti-ish type thing. And then I'll put the top on, write my labels, put it in the freezer. And that's how I make all of his meals for the week. And it has become so easy. And if I have any leftover vegetables, then I'll use that for his lunch. Because maybe he'll be having um, chickpea blondies, which is his protein and fruit, and then he just has plain vegetables. So then I'll do some of these leftover cooked vegetables, or I'll just put in some like frozen vegetables, and then they'll heat that up for him and steam it. So that's another really easy way to get in all that. Then another thing that I did um, was we went on a, we were the worship band for a conference. Oh, we have more people coming on. Um... Come close, ma'am. Okay. Um, didn't see. Tammy, is it okay to uh, measure veggies raw when they are eaten cooked? That's a great question. So they will shrink a little bit from raw to cooked. Uh, frozen to cooked and like raw broccoli, like fresh raw broccoli to cooked, those will each shrink a little bit different. So what I would do, like and I had in my um, zucchini recipe, is I added one whole ounce more of the raw because I know it's going to shrink. So depending on if it's lunch, I would probably do an extra half ounce of vegetables frozen or raw because it will shrink when you're cooking it or steaming it or that type of thing. But ideally, you should measure it after you cook it, but depending on what you're doing. So like if you're meal prepping, sometimes you can't. But yes, it will shrink. For dinner, depending on the vegetable, like zucchini shrink a lot, you could do one to two ounces extra, depending on what you're doing. Um, Gail, I learned the hard way not to multiply ground flaxseed in a soup. It was way too thick. <gasps> Ooh, yes, that can be, and that can get a little slimy sometimes with the flaxseed. I have found like just a, a tablespoon of arrowroot powder works perfect in a soup for like thickening it just a little bit. But yeah, I've done the flaxseed and it can get funky really quick. So yes, you are correct there in a soup. Now if you're making like a cookie with flaxseed, then you could multiply it. Um, oh yes, so we went on this conference, we were the worship band, so we were there for five days. So we ate breakfast at the hotel. If you saw the adventure of the hotel, we get there and the first day is biscuits and gravy. That is not breakfast. So we did a fat instead of a grain. And then usually they'll have like just plain oatmeal packets, nothing. They had like the flavored sugar filled ones. So I asked the guy, I'm like, do you have any plain oatmeal? He's like, no, what's there is there. So I had a fat instead of a grain. It worked, but you can do that if you're in a pinch. Then the next morning he did come out and he said, oh, I found some for you guys. It was so sweet, but we had brought our own oats by then. Anyways, so what I did was we packed our lunch because we ate breakfast at the hotel, we brought our own lunch, and then we ate out for dinner because uh, we had to do that with the conference because it was like during dinner time, so we had to buy dinner. But what I did was I took a recipe and I multiplied it times five, which will be in my batch cooking cookbook. It was like these pumpkin bars, so I multiplied that times five. So it was my full fat, full fruit, and full protein. Then I have an air fryer and I just air fried a ton of veggies and I put them in my containers and I did that six ounces in five different containers and that was my whole lunch. Super easy to bring with, did not take too long to make. The protein was all done in one and you could do that also. How easy is that? And then you have five lunches just ready to go. I'm cool where I can eat like air fried veggies. I can eat them hot or cold so they're good on the road. But if you want cold, you can make like coleslaws because those won't get super soggy 
if you do like the shredded cabbage and not the lettuce, that would be a delicious lunch also. I did that one day where I made like a coleslaw. It was great. So there's so many possibilities for batch cooking and meal prepping and traveling and all that kind of stuff. Like if you're traveling with this, just freeze these. And then depending, we had a hotel and it had a mini fridge, fit all of our lunches in there perfectly. So you can make it fit. And it's not as hard as you think. So is there any more questions about batch cooking or meal prepping? Because we are done. That can keep cooking. And then I'm going to divide it up into three different containers for Timmy. Because this is my breakfast for tomorrow. And, the, and then I have one more for the next day. I get to wake up, grab my breakfast, get my coffee. And then I can go back to my bed and spend my morning routine, which is perfect. I don't have to think about breakfast. Uh, I was going today and I was like, oh, I'm going to make some of extra of this fruit because then I'll have it with breakfast. Oh, wait, my breakfast is already made. Huh? How easy is that? I will be posting this recipe that we made today. I'll be um, probably post it tomorrow morning on the recipe page. Uh, you might be able to find it tonight posted on my website. Usually I'll post it there first and then I'll share it everywhere tomorrow. And then, yeah, so exciting things are coming soon. So keep an eye out for those. It was so, so, so fun spending the day in the kitchen with you. I have missed you guys so much. And it is always such a party to cook with you guys in the kitchen and to like meal prep and problem solve together. It is so fun. Uh, Tammy, so you add one ounce per 10 ounces. Oh, if you do the 10 and 10 split, Yes, I if it's frozen, I would do one ounce extra depending if you're going to steam it or cook it. You could experiment and just make it one time just the vegetable separate and just kind of weigh it before and after and see how much it did shrink depending on the vegetable. But yeah, I would do one ounce. That's like a safe bet. Depending. Uh, Gail, I learned the hard way. Oh, that was I already read that one. Uh, Tammy, are your cookbooks on Amazon? Great question. They sure are. The Cooking with Joy 1 and 2 and the Holiday Volume are not because Amazon does not make that size of cookbooks. But all of my single volumes, which I have them right here, all of my single volumes are on Amazon. So volumes 1 through 12 are on Amazon. Simply Delicious. Both of the, excuse me, Whole Food Plant Based volumes are on there. So you can find all of those on there also. So that's very fun. Um, Gail, I missed you so much too. I know I missed all my friends. We're going to have to do this again. I was, it was like Monday and I'm like, oh, we don't have anything going on Saturday or Friday. So I'm, we're going to get together and cook. I'm going to show you how to meal prep and batch cook. So it was so fun to have this opportunity to be together. I'm going to find another one and we'll have to do some more cooking together. All right, well, thank you for joining me and for meal prepping with me. And I love you guys so much. Oh, tonight, if you want a little extra oomph and inspiration for your week to get it going in the right direction, I will be doing a live Bible study with my family. I'll be sharing in our kitchen right here. If you turn the camera around, that's where we're going to be. You can actually see the kitchen behind us. I could be cooking the whole time. Anyways. So it's a Bible study and it is so fun. We start out with a song and then we all share. It's a panel, so it's not just my point of view. And it's just so uplifting and inspirational. And it's just, we just like sit down and chat and really get into some deep things. And it, it makes my week go better. So it's tonight at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Love of God Family Book, Love of God Family Church Facebook page. You can find it there. Or if you're personal friends with me on Facebook, I share it also. And it's just a really fun time being together. So that's tonight if you want to join me. And then, oh, we have some more comments. Um, oh, that is such a cool name. Gwendolyn, oh, but it's spelt so cool. I love it. I'm late to the party. What is your breakfast for tomorrow? It is these banana blueberry, wait, blueberry nut tops. I had to look and see what they are. They're blueberry nut tops and you get to eat all of these for breakfast. They're like peanut buttery, nutty, fruity with blueberries. They were so good. That's what we made. I'll be posting the recipe and once this live stream is finished you can watch it again and again and again so you can catch up with us. So no problem if you're late. Linda, Natalie, thank you so much. Always so fun to spend with you in your kitchen. 
I love you, Linda. I'm gonna try making up a new peanut butter cookie recipe this afternoon. <gasps> Ooh, special request from a friend. See you more. <laughs> Who eats healthy? Ooh, I love when friends give me challenges like that. Isn't that so fun? And then to like crush it and show them how good it is. Uh, oh, on uh, TikTok, I have four of your cookbooks. That sounds so good. Okay, I will watch Bible study. <gasps> that is so awesome. Thank you for joining on TikTok. It's hard to see the comments because they make them so small. But yes, thank you for joining. Uh, Tammy, thank you so much. Thank you, Tammy, for joining in the fun. Um, Diane, got your large cookbook on Barnes & Noble. Yes. You can find it on Barnes & Noble, all of my cookbooks. I publish my books through them and I have my books printed by them. So you can find all of them there too. And sometimes I think they actually have sales going on. I'm not sure. Like sometimes if you're a newcomer, sometimes you can get like 10% off or if you sign up for a card or stuff like that, membership, that kind of thing. So check on there, you might find some sales. That is always fun. Uh, you are frozen. Oh no, well I am in Minnesota, so it could be pretty cold. It's actually pretty warm today. But hopefully it'll unfreeze for you. It could be the internet. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. It's always so hard to say goodbye. I just wanna like chat with you and be in the kitchen all day with my friends. I love you guys. So thank you for joining me and cooking with me and I'm gonna probably say thank you again for joining me in it, like two minutes because I like to say that. Anyways, I love you guys and oh, the cookies. All right, I'll show you the cookies. We gotta show you what they look like. Oh, they're perfect. So this is three days of breakfast worth. So I'm gonna divide this into three. I'm gonna let it cool first. And I like the parchment paper because clean pan, the less dishes, the better, right? And I try to use like one bowl for all his meal prepping. So I'll start with sweet and then make sure there's no egg or whatever and I'll keep going with that. So the less dishes I have to do, the better. But thankfully, my family helps me out. But yeah, here's his meals for three days. Breakfast, ooh, it's hot. So delicious. All right, I gotta show you this compared to made in a muffin pan. So these are made in a muffin pan. These are made as cookies. The cookies will probably be a little bit more like done, but they're both just really delicious. So here it is. How easy was that? Ooh, it's getting hot. Well, remember, Miss Linda loves this. She even put it at her work. They asked her, what's your favorite quote? And she did this one and I love it too. I made shirts out of it, not this one, but I made shirts that say that. That just remember, you're only one thought away from a good day. So you change your thought and you can change your day. Then my sister took it farther. So we share a bedroom and she was in her reading her Bible. I was reading my Bible and she turns to me and she's like, you know what? God kind of gave me a rundown of things he was talking to me and he said life is too short to be crabby the end and I'm sitting there and I'm like that is so true life is way too short to be crabby way too short to be whiny way too short to think on the downside so let's change our thought just one thought away from a good day one thought away from not being crabby because life is too short to be crabby the end thank you for coming to my TED talk that is it <laughs> how fun is that just one just slight thought change and you can change your whole day. You can, just meal prepping, you can change your whole day to, oh, I have to meal prep too. I get to make the meals today. I get to be in the kitchen, gonna turn some tunes on, get to sweat a little bit, warm up the house, whatever, and then you get to eat the food. So that's a win-win. Just that one little thought change can change your whole day. All right, well, I won't keep you anymore. We will be back sometime soon. Join us Sunday. We have a food freedom rescue from worry. We're going through Kelly's devotional that she wrote about food freedom, which is oh, amazing. Sundays at 7 p.m. on the recipe page. And we share it also on our pages and stuff. It'll be on the weight loss page. Also, I share it on there because I love you guys joining us. Oh, it is such a fun time. It's a Zoom chat. So if you want to join the Zoom, you can like interact. We have questionnaire and just chatting afterwards, which is so fun. And you can chat with us on Facebook too. We answer your comments and that is a fun time too. So Sundays, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm not sure the time changes difference with that. So join us those days too. All right. I love you guys. 
I'm gonna end here before I just keep babbling. Linda, oh, the Sunday studies are my favorite. <gasps> yes, it is so fun. Oh man, it just uplifts my night. I laugh so much. We have such a fun time. There's just so many like golden moments that we have there. It is so fun. I love you guys. All right, I'll have to say goodbye. Until next time, with joy, Natalie.